Here's a question you might be asking yourself. Why on earth should I care about the seafloor? I know I'm supposed to, good heavens, I'm supposed to get credit for this course, right? But why do I care or should I care about the seafloor? Well, here are a couple of thoughts. Imagine you're a um, space alien and you're cruising around above our planet and um, you're trying to detect what's going on on our planet. And let's say you're an uh, advanced civilization, you have the means of seeing quite readily through water. In fact, seeing the Earth as if water weren't there. Well, what you would see, the largest feature you would see on our planet, would not be anything that any of us have ever seen unless you've perhaps visited Iceland. Because the largest landscape feature, and I'm not speaking of land in the literal sense, I'm saying we've sucked the water out or made the water invisible extraterrestrial style. We are looking at the largest feature as being 44,000 mile long mountain range. Now that is longer than the combined lengths of the Andes and the Rockies and the Himalayas. And what it represents is what we call the Mid-Ocean Ridge. And the Mid-Ocean Ridge is a feature that runs down the center of the North and South Atlantic and then sort of spirals around the globe somewhat snake-like. In fact, if you look at a seafloor map, you would see this thing. And I think it's kind of stunning to realize that the biggest thing you could see on Earth from space, we have never seen. Here's another example. If you were to drop to the bottom of the ocean on the seafloor on either side of this mid-ocean ridge, you would be on a plane that is generally called the abyssal plane. Abyssal meaning, well, abyss, deep. Well, there's something else about this plane that's quite extraordinary. The abyssal plains are the flattest places on our planet. Now, you, maybe some of you are from, uh, I don't know, the high plains of Texas or Kansas or somewhere where it seems quite flat. Well, guess what? If you drive, say, between Borger and Pampa, that's a pretty flat drive, if any of you ever made it. It's a steep drive by comparison to what the abyssal plain on the seafloor is. You're climbing, if you're on the high plains of Texas, at a rate of about 10 feet per mile towards the Rocky Mountains virtually imperceptible as you're driving. In the case of the abyssal plains, you could go several hundred miles and not change elevation more than three feet. Imagine making a drive from here to Chicago and the road never deviating up or down by more than three feet. Hmm, pretty remarkable, eh? Here's one more for you. It turns out the highest mountain on our planet, well, first of all, let me define highest. One could define highest conventionally as above sea level. Well, that's Mount Everest. You could divine, define highest as, let's say, distance from the center of the Earth. That's a pretty strange one. And it turns out there's a volcano in South America that is the highest peak on the planet. It's called Chimborazo. It's the highest peak on the planet if you measure the distance from the very center of the Earth to the tippy top of Chimborazo. But a third version of measuring the height of a mountain is from its base to its top. And by that measurement, the big island of Hawaii is the highest and actually the most massive mountain on our planet. If you measure from the 13,000 feet above sea level to the sea floor, you have a mountain that is fully 35,000 feet high. And oh, by the way, Everest comes in at just a click under 30,000 feet. So I don't know, those are superlatives. Are those reasons for studying the seafloor? Eh, maybe so, maybe not, but um, I think they're pretty cool reasons, sure. So let's study the seafloor.